person sitting next to you. Okay, about half of you are looking at someone with herpes. <laughs> or more specifically, someone with the herpes simplex virus. But don't worry, we can't tell who's who, because herpes simplex is a ninja. The herpes simplex virus comes in two forms, both of which cause painful blistering ulceration of the skin, either on your face, as cold sores, or more sadistically, in your genitals. Not sounding particularly stealthy ninja so far, I grant you. But after the blisters disappear, and you think you're in the clear, the virus hasn't gone. It's just hiding. It's made its way into a nerve cell, climbed up that nerve cell, and stopped just outside your brain or spinal cord. And there it enters a dormant state known as latency. And in this dormant state, the only thing the virus is working on is maintaining its cover. The key to maintaining this cover is a stretch of viral DNA, which encodes a set of instructions which prevents the nerve cell from telling the immune system it's been infected and also prevents the nerve cell from committing suicide, which is what it would like to do once it realizes it's got herpes. <laughs> and as well as influencing the nerve cell's behavior, that stretch of DNA also keeps the rest of the virus in check, preventing it from causing an active herpes infection. That is until it receives the equivalent of a bat signal for herpes. It could be sunlight or the stress of telling your esteemed judges that we probably get herpes simplex. Whatever the trigger, it causes the virus to reactivate, move down that nerve cell and back into the skin, where it causes new blisters. But in doing so, the ninja has had to show its face, and this is when we can attack it, using drugs which inhibit viral replication. However, herpes simplex is a crafty ninja. It staggers the reactivation process, so there's always some of the virus in that latent state that we just can't get at. Now, scientists have been trying to develop a way to make all of the virus reactivate at once so we could wipe it out. Unfortunately, we've not been successful yet. To date, there is no cure for herpes simplex. This is a sad fact for the vast majority of us, but an opportunity for some who set up herpes dating websites, one of which has over 650,000 singles with herpes, all looking for love and all hoping to defy the adage that the difference between love and herpes is that herpes lasts forever. <laughs> now, those of you hoping that you're in the herpes-free half of the audience, I'm afraid I've got some bad news. You see, there are eight herpes viruses which infect people. You might have heard of some of the others, like the virus that causes chickenpox. Now, as a species, we are riddled with herpes viruses. Over 90% of people on the planet will have had at least one of these viruses in their lifetime. And as all herpes viruses can establish lifelong infections, chances are almost all of us <laughs> have a very own herpes virus hiding inside us. Ninja. <laughs> Catherine, just before the judges start, you mentioned you're a grants advisor at Welcome Trust. So we just a little clarification. Claire, I know you work for Welcome, so there's a slight conflict of interest here. Can I just check if either of our judges have ever applied in the past or might be likely to apply <laughs> in the future for, say, a grant from the welcome? Jim, squeaky clean, Mark? Uh, possibly. Mark, possibly. <laughs> okay, so basically, Jim, you're taking the lead on this one. You're uh, the only one we trust. All right, okay, right. Um, very interesting choice of subject matter. I mean, what, did, did, you think, did you come up with it because, you know, as a sort of a public health warning exercise or just because it's a fascinating topic? Kind of creepy and a little bit cool that we've all got herpes viruses hiding inside of us and it kind of disturbed me so I thought I'd share it with everyone else and disturb them also. <laughs> so, yeah. Do I have to think of another no, question? No, sorry. I, 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 <laughs> despite the, the fact uh, that I might apply to the welcome, I'm still <laughs> going to ask this. Um, viruses, they've had a, a lot of press over the last five years as a therapy. Mm. Could you tell me your favourite virus and how that's been used as a therapy? God, my favourite virus and how it's been used as a therapy. Um, you can stick with HSV if you want. Um, I can't think of any viruses that have been used as therapy apart from in the context of, um, are you thinking bacteriophage would be an example. But it's, I don't know the name of the virus and it's not necessarily my favourite. Um, but so bacteriophage would be a virus that can infect bacteria. And certainly in the the world where we're thinking about concerns about um, antibiotic resistance. Some people have been talking about 
Well, what about we could exploit the fact that viruses can infect bacteria and kill them? So that's something that I know has been looked at, but um, I don't know if it's my personal love of viruses. Um, yeah, is it, is it? I mean, you say that, don't you, that you've got a personal love of viruses. Why no, this? I mean, no, why, you know, <laughs> why, why this topic? Because why I think, well, for me, I think... Um, Personally, I think STDs are quite an interesting topic. I think they're a big public health problem. I think that herpes is one that is really common, but we don't really talk about it as much. And I think a huge problem when it comes to... Well, cancer's to, a big problem. Yeah, but STDs are a problem that comes with a huge amount of stigma. You have cancer and people don't judge you mental for illness. It. Okay, people judge people for having mental illness, but that doesn't make viruses less of a problem, STDs less of a problem. Right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I was just wondering if there was something more than just a fascination with STDs. Well, I just think... Don't and on think that note, Jim... I, I'm, I'm, I'm about to say, stop bullying her. I mean, come on. Do you not think... There think is I, one more no. question. I won't ask. She, well, your, your, your hands are clean. OK, in that case, can we please put your hands... Wipe your hands, then please put them together uh, for Catherine Carver. Uh, 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 uh,